South Carolina, June 28, 1954. And then South Dakota tied its record from 1936 back in 2006. I was the only one in the 2000s. Only one in the 2000s. And we put all this in a bar graph. It looks like this. In the narrative that's being promoted now by political factions is that this warming is caused dominantly or even exclusively by anthropogenic forces, meaning humans' activity, primarily the burning of fossil fuels, the consumption of fossil fuels. We're supposed to believe that any extreme weather event that happens now is now the result of global warming and the activities of humans. I guess what I'm getting at is that are we supposed to accept that the natural forces that have been operational on any and every time scale that we can measure, from annual to decadal to centennial to millennial and beyond, they've ceased to operate? So here's climatic changes in Europe over the past thousand years, and you go back to 900 AD and to 2000. Look at here. Here's the modern warming, right? Here's the medieval warm period. Well, that did not support the narrative. So they had to come up with this graph right here. This is again, the so-called hockey even, stick graph. Even then, that graph, you know, the vertical is spanning 1.5 degrees Celsius, right? That's Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. The, the fatalities now from severe weather and, and climatic events is minuscule compared to what it used to be. I mean, literally like 10%. All right, there it is. So you've got uh, all hurricanes is the upper graph, meaning equal to or greater than 64 knots, and major hurricanes greater than or equal to 96 knots is the lower one. And so, you know, you look at each, each, both of these two graphs and show me, is there a trend there? Is there a trend of obviously increasing hurricane intensity or frequency? Doesn't look like it. Just, just as quick as a side, the Met Office Hadley Center Climatic Research Unit was the uh, is the primary source for most of the data, and NOAA and NASA both do rely on the data that comes through the Climate Research Unit in uh, Climatic Research Unit in in the UK. Uh, just to remind people, this was the. Uh, the research organization that got caught with its pants down when uh, when the, some of the chief scientists working on it were conspiring to cover up uh, certain data regarding the climate. It was uh, East Anglia University, right? Okay, first, first thing that's wrong with this graph is, again, where is the, 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 uh, the 1930s warm period? You don't see it at all in here, do you? But you get to this one here, right? Early 40s, comes up to 0.2. And then if you follow the trend for the next uh, almost 40 years, it's actually cooling. That's what I'm... So interestingly, with this graph, if you think about it, okay, 1940, 1945 is when our fossil fuel... During World War II is when our fossil fuel consumption really exponentially took off. Yep. And then it's increased throughout the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s up to now, right? So think about this, our baseline for determining that we are now in unprecedented warmth was unprecedented cold, at least in terms of the last 10,000 years. So that's important. Where's your baseline? What are you using as your base to compare? Okay, so now here, we're going to a more realistic temperature range for the Earth from minus 10 to plus 10. Some scientists, and of course, they don't name any of the scientists, because if they did, they'd be some of the most prominent science, scientists in the field of climate studies and climate research. So the way they do this, and they use this for propaganda, some scientists say, some say scientists can't agree on Earth's temperature changes. Well, here's what disagreement looks like. And then they have the NASA Goddard. It's exactly the same graph we just looked at. What I want to look at here is you could figure this has gone up. It's it's higher than 5.5 gigatons per year, gigaton being a billion tons. 
typically on an average year, and of course this is over a short term, and it's uh, actually this is a number that would be adjusted upwards, 0.1 gigatons per year. Um, land use changes 1.6 billion tons, gigatons per year. Land photosynthesis and respiration, 120 uh, gigatons per year. Uh, oceanic photosynthesis, 107 gigatons. And I'm going to go to the next one. This shows another variation of the same thing. Animal and plant respiration is putting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Soil microorganism respiration, putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which the atmospheric reservoir, about 750 gigatons. Or, you know, roughly, you know, 10 times the, the amount of carbon dioxide that's assumed to be the result of fossil fuel consumption. But the working assumption for political purposes is, is we can just ignore all that and consider that the only, the, the only variability driving carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere now is human activity. The whole aim of practical populist politics is to keep the populace alarmed by an endless series of hobgoblins, most of them imaginary. In very round numbers, over the last century, since the beginning of major carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere, we've, the, we or some combination of fossil fuel consumption, also cement production, roughly we're talking about 100 parts per million increase, right? From 300 parts per million to 400 parts per million. So in other words, 100 uh, molecules of carbon dioxide have increased per every million molecules of air, right? So think about that, what that translates into. 100 parts per million is one part per 10,000. Well. As far as that goes now, here next to it, right down here, there's your one molecule yes. of carbon dioxide. That's how much it's increased. Yes. Rude. Since the Industrial Revolution. They're still putting out the climate denier. They're still using that label that anybody who questions, all you have to do is ask questions about the narrative. And that makes you a climate change denier. But here's the thing. If you want to know, you know, the opposition perspective and how and, and really what your opponent, how qualified they are to actually get in the ring. Well, as soon as they say and call somebody and use the term climate change denier, that tells you right there, tells you right there. You don't have an argument. You don't have facts. All you're doing is you have a name that you can call. And you think that if enough people call that name over and over again and say the same stuff over and over again, the authorities, the experts, then it's the end of the matter and you can go back to your job or whatever you're doing in order to make sure that you can pay your taxes so that we can then redistribute that, that money to elsewhere uh, to buy the uh, preferred outcomes. And that's exactly what they're doing. There they're, they're factions, political factions that are buying outcomes.